Hi, my name is Jennifer Marandino. The day I found out I had breast cancer was February 11, 2008. I had recently gone to see my gynecologist for my yearly pap, and she noticed a small lump and recommended that I go see um, another doctor to have a mammogram and possibly an ultrasound. And I wasn't alarmed or alerted um, because this was something that I've been dealing with since I was 25. There always seemed to be a problem and I would go get a mammogram and an ultrasound and then it would come up inconclusive so I wasn't scared, I wasn't nervous at all. So I was in the office um, getting the mammogram and they started the test and the, uh, the tech took a couple films and then she left the room and um, she did this a couple times and then a doctor came in the room and that had never happened to me before and I definitely got a little nervous there and then um, it took a few more films and the doctor told me you know she's just trying to get the best um, images that she can you know and try not to worry <clears throat> easier said than done. And uh, they, they wanted to definitely send me um, into the other room to get an ultrasound as well, just to be sure. So I went and did that, had the ultrasound, and when that was finished, I was w walking down the hallway, and the doctor was there, and she was kind of leaning against the wall, I'll never forget, and she said, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you have breast cancer. And I remember my stomach was just, oh, you know, sunk. And I was shaking and didn't know what to do. And they had sent me in to another room to schedule an MRI. And I remember the way the woman spoke to me was as if I had cancer. And I, I had never heard that before. Um, <clears throat> So that began my journey. Um, my husband was out of town at the time, and uh, I called and told him what she had said, and you know, we were just going to wait to hear for sure when we knew for sure. We couldn't just go by this one doctor saying she thought that it was so. We went and had the um, MRI done, and then we had core biopsy done, and along with this we were trying to pick out um, a breast surgeon uh, and the hospital that we felt comfortable with. So we'd seen a few doctors here and there, and on our third try, we um, saw Dr. Alexander here at Memorial Sloan Kettering and we were very pleased. She gave us a hug when she walked in the room and we knew that was right for us. So sweet. Um, so once they determined that it was um, breast cancer after all these tests were done, um, I decided to have a double mastectomy. Um, they recommended a single, but I wanted to have a double. I didn't want to have to deal with this again every six months having the other one checked out, so I opted for a double. So I had a double mastectomy and uh, they found three tumors in my right breast and 12 of the 22 lymph nodes they had pulled out um, were also cancer. So I had 15 tumors, which put me at stage 3B. Uh, so after that, I had uh, chemo, uh, the performance of chemotherapy, five weeks of radiation, and during this time, I was off um, 
from work on disability. So I was out of work for about seven or so months. And um, in about, I don't know, I, would think, I think it was like November, I re-entered the workforce and it was very difficult. I felt different than everybody else. Um, I felt like I knew something that everybody else didn't know and it just, it, it's very hard to describe how you how I felt, but over time, things did, did get better. I always say that time is the best healer, and um, I started becoming more comfortable and becoming myself again. It felt like it was a little different, but still kind of myself. And a couple years went by. I was on. Um, uh, a drug to kind of help me, you know, keep the cancer at bay if there were any residual cells around. And um, I was having checkups every three months because I was stage 3B. They were kind of watching me closely. And in, I would say, towards the end of 2009, beginning of 2010, I started noticing something when I would lean against the counter, the lymph nodes in my groin were sensitive, and this was something that happened the first time. I had noticed the same thing. Um, I alerted my doctors of this, and they could feel them, the lymph nodes, they were swollen. So uh, they decided to do a tumor marker test of my blood and my tumor markers had gone up a little bit. So putting these two things together, they decided to do a PET scan, PET CT. And on the PET CT, a uh, lesion showed up in my liver and in my bones, which meant um, I had cancer again. And they, uh, determined after a um, liver biopsy that it was breast cancer, which is better than having liver cancer. So I was, you know, I guess somewhat pleased with that, but devastated, obviously, to be stage four at, you know, 38 years old. Then I've been on several different drugs. Uh, the way they they do it is they start you on a drug, and you are on it for a few months. They test your tumor markers and uh, they do a PET scan and check to see if it's working. And if it's working, great. You move forward and you keep going. And if not, they switch your drug um, and they try to find one that works best for you. And you just keep continuing on the cycle because stage four breast cancer is more of a chronic disease than what people think it is. Um, I wanted to talk about um, one of the most important things um, that I discovered through this journey, uh, which is the support group and the relationships that I formed um, throughout these last four years. Uh, I was in an earlier stage group, um, obviously before I was diagnosed at stage four. Um, I'm now in a different group um, than that one, but the relationships that I formed in that other group are just beautiful and sisterly. Um, what, what we shared in that room, only we can understand and only we can 
help each other with because we're going through it at the same time or someone's gone through it ahead of you and they share their story to help you get through your journey. It's just invaluable and amazing. And you really rely on these women to help you. And it also helps you so much when you're able to help somebody in their journey. Someone new comes in, they ask you questions, and if you're able to just say one thing that helps them, it, it really changes everything. It's, it's important. So, this journey, although very difficult, beyond difficult, um, is just one that I wanted to share with you. And hopefully you can get something out of it. Maybe share it with somebody that you love to help them. And that's my